who wants to lead us to pleasure is uh, prabhav do would you like to lead us i'm sure i mean i think your son is there right oh yeah yeah he said uh, sure yeah sure okay go ahead we will we are will follow you i pledge of allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god thank you so much that was beautiful okay let's do the roll call quick roll call um vinita verma here chip is not here carla is present here, right yes. hi carla um kathy here is here uh siv not here susan here uh paul not here um kelly clarissa yes here okay, lisa yes here uh sharon judith and i know i don't have laura's name over here whose else name do i don't have over here okay uh, did i call everybody from uh, from fes staff kelly did i get everybody's name or did i miss out someone yes you called everyone Hello, okay thank you so much for, for confirming that you are here thank you for giving us your evening um but i don't i don't think we have anybody new do we for introductions i don't think so okay since we don't have anybody new for introductions we'll continue with our next um agenda item which is meeting minute record i know laura is there right right laura you are the one who are recording who is recording the meeting thank you yes thank you for doing so um approval of meeting minutes the committee members should have seen the meeting minutes did you did you find it in the drive um we can have a motion to approve the meeting minutes unless we have some amendments to make motion to uh do we have a quorum can we conduct business uh, we this is i mean <laughs> technically we are supposed to have a large committee but since we don't have in the large committee no. anymore and the three members I who think, are missing i think we do have quorum because it's just um it's four members out of the seven and they have to represent um they have to represent at least half of the different categories so as long as vanita and susan were from my understanding whatever past board meeting happened um they were made full members of the cboc yeah. mm -hmm. and one is a parent one is a parent teacher and then kathy and i are still listed as others but i don't know if hmm. so then we have four at least in here so we yeah so we have four but i don't know if we've got all the categories yeah. covered it has to be at least 50% of the committee when you got there and then uh, at least one person from three of the five organizations. So like you said, other parent and parent organization, mm -hmm. those are three. Okay. Thank so you. We, we are good. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Carla. Um, thank you for confirming. So if we can move on. In um, which case I move to approve the minutes. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Second. Susan seconds it. Thank you so, so much. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any not in favor, say nay. So approved motion, uh, motion to approve the meeting minutes uh, moves on. And do we have any oral or written communications? 
I have not received any oral or written communications from anyone. Okay. So I have even I have not received anything, any information. Do does anybody in the committee have uh, any information regarding that? Did you receive any communication from any community member? No. No. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, we have two people from public in here. Uh, would you like to give any public comments? <laughs> Seeing no hand raise, uh, we'll move on to the next agenda item. Um, was there a hand raise? I saw something just pop up and go away. That was by accident. Say it again. That was by accident. Oh, OK. That's fine. Thank you. Um, Okay, we had no public briefings from last month. Next agenda item is CBOC members and terms uh, uh, terms and services. Has FUSD approved any new terms for CBOC uh, members? Kelly? Uh, we have not approved any new members uh, since the last meeting. Okay. Uh, May and as you see in the next agenda item, which is plan to fulfill the CPOC vacancies, has there been any efforts to do that? Uh, the only thing that I'm aware of is that we have, uh, you know, advertised it on our websites and we have asked the school principals to put a notice in their newsletters that go out to their community members about the vacancies. Okay. Um, We've also... Um, it hasn't come out yet, but the the I think it's there's four, three or four a year. Those uh, Fremont, the city of Fremont um, newsletters that go to every residential um, address in the city. We we have a page in that and in that um, we included a call for people to join committees. It's not specific to CBOC, but um, we are we're trying to get community members to go to the committees page and, and find our openings. OK. OK. I hope that I hope that works. We seriously are in dire need, as you can see. We had to count our quorum and how many people are here. So <laughs> that that just proves our dire need that we are, we are looking for more com more committee members. Mm. Any key personal change personnel change in FUSD related to CPOC, Kelly? Hey, Vanita. Uh, yes. Um, sorry, mm -hmm. Vanita. Could we go back to the I think we were still trying to iron out everybody's terms. Remember the yes, the number of terms everybody was. Um, so, for example, Kathy and I are both terming out this right as of now. Did we figure out with the board whether we needed to reapply, resubmit an application, or what the process was for that? It's my understanding, based on the last conversation that I remember having with the board is that the terms that were established are the terms that still stand. And the interpretation is still, the jury's still out on that, whether it's, you know, people run consecutive or if your first term counts or if you're a first term member, can you go a full three terms? And so I have left that with uh, my associate superintendent and also, we reached out to our legal counsel to make sure that we're not, you know, like messing things up. And so I have got, not gotten back any information. Yet. But uh, Kelly, for Carla and I, we are eligible to do one more term each, I do believe. But the, the question for she and I, whose terms have actually terminated, the, the, do we put in another application? It's my understanding, yes. And I'm the question that I was confused about is if you guys do do your applications again, does that reset the clock? Because it says you can go unlimited time, but it's just the terms in which you are serving. There's there's a limitation, and so I don't know if the reapplication resets the clock or if we go according from when you first did it, and then you know from there. So that's where I'm confused, and I asked the question, and I'm waiting to hear back. 
So should should Kathy and I be submitting an application to you to go before the board at the next meeting? Um, you know, why don't we go ahead and do that and I will verify. And if so, we'll go ahead and do that for January. Okay. Because it's too late for us to get on the agenda for next Wednesday, unfortunately. So it'll have to be the first Wednesday in January if we if we need to do that. Okay. No, nobody seems to care particularly, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, Kathy? <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, I just, yeah. you know, there's a committee and, you know, if we are voting on things and stuff like that and you and i are present making it a quorum well then that does that raise, raise questions about anything that is put forward you know and yeah. i participated in the meeting um that's last the special month. meeting and mm -hmm. i think my my term had already expired you know yeah. but um nobody seems to be too worried <laughs> they can't get, we can't get members anyway. Yeah, right. I think when it's kind of like, I guess when you're in a drought, you don't really like, <laughs> don't really care where the water comes from. I don't know. Okay. Um, but the, the the bottom line is, I guess you and I need to go online and just get new new forms. Yeah, I can do that, Kelly. It's fine. I, I think if the if the application is, I'm assuming is the same. It's like five lines and you write down yeah, it hasn't you know. changed it yeah. hasn't okay. changed that's fine thank you yeah okay thank you carla for bringing that question because i did i did remember about talking about it but i thought okay if kelly says there has been no change then there has there has been no change but thank you so much mm -hmm. thank you carla thank you kathy for continuing to serve in the drought <laughs> um Going back to our agenda, where were we? Okay, uh, there has been, so Kelly, I was, I asked a question about, are there any personal changes in FUS to return to CBOC? Sorry about that, I was muted. Um, yes, there has. So as, as of course you guys know, Eric Chu uh, left us and he is now uh, working in his new position as the director of facility in San Carlos Unified School District which is wonderful because it's only seven minutes from his house, he said. And his uh, he gets to drive his children to school, so he's pretty excited about that, whereas he didn't have that option before. So he is sorely missed. Um, I currently do not have a staff secretary that services facilities and construction, so I apologize if things are a little delayed in getting responses to things, but um, it's just myself and Gina Shim at this point Today, Nick Ampon was assigned the interim senior project manager for, um, for facilities to take Eric's place, but he's also still serving in his capacity as the supervising engineer for the MO wow. department. So he's pulled a little thin and we're, we're managing and we will um, hope to fill um, that position in a permanent status sometime this month or either the next, you know, within January. And then we are still um, gonna be looking to offset the, the ripple effect that has occurred in maintenance and operations. Because with Nick moving, it also means that his position needs to be backfilled and whoever takes over his position, that position has to be backfilled and so forth and so on. So we have a, a little bit of a card game going on right now with us and trying to manage everything. Um, and oh, and then we have one other Kelly um, that this will be Clarissa's last meeting with yes. us. Um, Clarissa is moving on to another opportunity as well, um, over on the peninsula, which is a little easier for her. Um, and then we will have uh, someone else in place for next month's meeting. But um, I'm also going to ask Stan to come to that meeting as well, Stan Ng, since he um, he will be training our new person and uh, um, has such a, a wealth of the knowledge of the budgets and the way they were set up and whatnot. So he'll be working with our new person to bring them up to speed. So on our next, in our next meeting, you'll see that person as well as Stan. So we have um, 
a good flow of information maintained. And then um, from there on that personal will join us each month. Thank you, Lisa, for the update. Thank you, Kelly, for the updated update. Oh, you're welcome. Kelly, um, still Nick's last name. Ampon, A-M-P-O-N. Thank you. Poor Nick. <laughs> yeah, today so was crazy. his first day, and I met with him, and he was just like, I kind of want to go back to my office. office. <laughs> He's like, boy, I didn't realize that you guys deal with so much on a daily basis. I said, yeah, it's just like your office and M&O, but like warp speed five. <laughs> just He's different, just about different players and said, different well, issues. Welcome to facilities. <laughs> yeah, you expect everybody to join you running. <laughs> yeah, so you did a pretty good job today. So we'll see how we'll see how that goes. Vanessa, we just had a third person with just a phone number uh, come on to the meeting. Yeah, I, I. Paul Whitman. Oh, oh. Thank like, you. All I got so far is the audio. I can't get the picture. I'm not. I'm not good at computers, as you figured out. Thank you, Paul. Let me know if when you need help. I, I, I'll be more than happy to help you with that. Well, yeah. I always need help on this damn thing. It never works for me. Well, we're just glad you're here. I'm listening. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next agenda item. Uh, let's talk about special meeting that we had with FUSD board meeting uh, board. Uh, I know Kelly and I were there. Um, I don't think any because Brian and Chip were there. Chip is not here in the I meeting. Was there. Yes. Oh, sorry, cannot get I meant to say Kathy. Kelly was of course there. Kathy was there with uh, for the meeting. And I hope the rest of you get had an opportunity to watch it on the uh, on the video that I shared. Um, so this will give us an opportunity to discuss anything that was discussed in that meeting. Um, and at a after the discussion, we can have a motion to adopt or not adopt the audit report. Kathy, do you want to? Uh, I thought it was a productive meeting. I'm sorry, I kind of didn't hear the last part. It was kind of like garbled. What was your last question? My last statement was that after after the discussion, we have we can we might or might not have a motion to approve the audit report. So, and I so, said, I thought it was a productive meeting. Um, I think that there were some questions raised at, to the, the, the school board. Um, somebody's dog, hello. <laughs> um, but it was, it was productive and my sense, and I've seen, I know Siv has sent something in, uh, but I, I think that horse has left the uh, barn. It was kind of a, a, a late comment. So my impulse would be to say, yes, we should approve, but I thought that it was a good meeting. So I, uh, this is Carla. I, I did not go in person, but I actually, um, believe it or not, was one of the few people that was viewing it live. <laughs> I know that there were comments about the thousands and thousands of people who are probably viewing it. And I was one of the thousands. Um, <laughs> so I will say I, I did have one question was that um, one of the recommendations was about providing non bond project budgets. And that was in the report itself, but it wasn't addressed in the presentation. And I don't remember if anybody brought that up. Non-bond money. Hmm. Non-bond project budgets. Like, um, so for example, um, like we would be able to um, see, it was part of the, the recommendation four on the page 10 of the report. TSSS recommends that a combined 
package of budgets, project schedules, and cash flow documents for non-bond funded projects be prepared and updated quarterly and included in a board packet. And that was one of the things that was not addressed in the presentation. Well, I can speak to that. So because you all are the CBOC committee, um, a decision was made by the associate superintendent, Nancy Pfeiffer, that we would address the items that were specific to the bond program. Because you guys don't really deal with, with non-related finance items. So we give the board a report on a quarterly basis of what projects are you know, going on. And those would be things that fall into m and realm or deferred maintenance items or annual expenditures that we have for different um, you know, things that we do on an annual basis for the district. So that is something that she made a decision not to include in that particular presentation because you guys are the CBOC and you're not full, you know, district oversight, you know. But that is something that is done. So does that mean that the the uh, the projects we are talking about not, are not CBOC uh, projects? No, the projects that you guys talk about and that you guys review are all projects that are funded by the bond. Right. So when they talk about non-bond program, those are items like, you know, re-asphalting of all the parking lots. You know, that's a deferred maintenance item that is dealt with on an annual basis. Or uh, we have a vendor that we hire to do uh, window washing or painting, or uh, every school has a budget for, you know, a certain amount of repairs. Or uh, if there's, you know, like um, what school is it? Matos has a new roof that's going on. Um, you know, those kinds of things. And those don't necessarily fall within a bond project that's been funded, but it is a financial obligation the district has to have with regard to the facilities that they, you know, monitor and we track on a regular basis. So Kelly, that recommendation was for the board to get quarterly statements, I guess, was that? Yes. And is that happening already? Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. if we as members of the public were to log on to board docs, presumably we would be able to access that information. You should be able to. I'm, I will confirm, but I'm not. I Once I turn over my piece of the report, it's assembled by uh, Associate Superintendent Pfeiffer, and I have no idea what happens to it after she compiles it and distributes it to whoever she gives it to. So um, I will verify for you how that is done, but I know that it is done because we have a monthly meeting with all of the directors and with the business division. Kelly, you're breaking up. Oh, you're freezing up. Have conversations out there going on and activities. And um, that information is compiled, but like I said, I have no idea where it goes after we put it together and, and move it forward. I do know that superintendent has an opportunity to review it, but you know, once again, I, I have no idea how the board gets that information. So question, um, I guess in the spirit of transparency, is there is there a problem with providing that information about, I mean, I, I think I would be interested to know just in like in general numbers, you know, if there's if there's one category of projects that are considered non bond projects, right, say column, or whatever document mm -hmm. a, and then we've got all and then we get all the numbers, the finance, or at all the bond projects, which would be document B, is there a problem or is there an issue with providing us with numbers for project for you know document A as, as we could potentially use that to really get a handle um, on I, I don't what... necessarily think that there would be, but I think I just need to go back and ask the question and get permission to do so. Because as with the report, even though I had it for quite some time, 
you know, I was instructed by the superintendent not to release it until I tell you to. And so it, I don't know if it's one of those kinds of things or, but I will ask mm -hmm. the question and I will get back to you guys. But I, I don't see any reason not to, but I'm not the powers that be, so. I personally think it'd be good information for us to have this, because mm -hmm. if we're, you know, if I don't really have a scope of the monies that are being spent on non you know, non bond projects, then I don't really have a good grasp of um, what the what the money issues are or are not right. Like if if the facilities right. budget is 90 percent, you know, comprised of bond, there's only like 10 percent that is non bond funded projects that I'd want to know that like I'd want to know like I think that'd be good information to have because then it's it's a good perspective to have in terms of what um, projects are being funded by the bond and how if there's li literally no money to spend on other projects right like versus well, understand when you guys see your reports those are the projects that are funded by bond dollars so there's nothing no. that's not on that report that hasn't been funded by a bond program. No, like I, I said, the things that you don't see are what m &O does and their deferred maintenance budgets and their weekly, monthly, quarterly expenditures. You know, like I, I just, um, I had a call with Kevin today. We had, you know, 27 invoices from Mobile Modular that we had to go through and, you know, verify, quantify and make sure there were funds available. And people might not think it's a lot, but, you know, the, the district has, I think, 87 portables and, you know, we get monthly bills on those every day, you know, every month. Mm -hmm. And so it's like it turns into a big number, but it's all these little numbers over time that add up. And it's like, whoa, we spent three hundred thousand dollars on portables. Well, yeah, but we spend it in these little bite size amounts, you know, for different ones. So it's that kind of stuff that, you know, we deal with. I, I don't think I personally would want i don't need the deep like the exact like itemized details or anything i just think yeah. I'd, it would be good to have a perspective of what the facilities the overall district facilities budget and monies that they're working with versus what is being funded by the bond i guess well then bond funds only fund bond projects so mm -hmm. yeah we keep them there you're frozen kelly we can hear you but your picture is totally frozen <laughs> How about now? No, nope, you're totally fine. I can okay. hear. I can hear wow. Kelly. Okay. I think yeah, we can hear. Actually, maybe it's my screen. I think all of you are. I can hear you all. But you're all. You're frozen. Today is today is a technology day for us. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, that's funny. I, in, in light of what Carlos has been talking about and Kelly's been talking about, and um, I, I think that there is some value to having an, an overall view. But I, my first thing, Carla, is that remember our responsibility is CBOC oversight. But having said that, as we bring in new members, it might be useful to do an orientation at a meeting in which there are new members. And this, it's a short orientation that says this is the overall facilities budget for FUS, for the Fremont Unified School District, X goes to maintenance, X goes to new construction, X amount is being funded this year from the CBOC funds, and these are the funds you're responsible for. I think that would be a useful thing to brief people on maybe once a year, but particularly when you get new members, because I think that people are not aware of kind of, and I think it's what Carla's trying to address, you're not, you're not aware what part of the pie, you know, you only have a part of the pie, but <laughs> what is the other pie and what's not getting eaten and what is, what is not being baked or whatever? Pardon me. It was Thanksgiving. Anyway, um, <laughs> I went down the rabbit hole on that one, but I hope you understand what I was saying. <laughs> I get it, Kathy. Okay. I'm with you. <laughs> so, uh, Having had this discussion, do you do you want to have more discussion? Do you think we need to have more discussion about the report that was presented to us, or or are we comfortable to have a motion? 
I would like to ask a member of the, a non-committee member who is listening in, uh, as he did attend the meeting also. Uh, Brian, what was your view of the meeting? Brian, I guess I um, thank you for asking. Um, you know, I've forgotten everything from before Thanksgiving, but um, I, I I thought it. I mean, I thought it was good, and, um, and it was a good good conversation, and was able to bring up a lot of things, and and uh, it was a good reset on uh, being kind of transparent about uh, all the work that. Uh, uh, or, or being transparent about looking at how we can improve and then about the work that's been that's happened thus far as well as the stuff yet, yet to come so um so um okay i'll ask that question again <laughs> oh kelly's moving now i can see her <laughs> So I'll ask that question again. What, what do you guys feel about the report, the audit report? Do you think uh, we can adopt it, or do you think we should have further discussion on um, on how it was presented and how um, or anything else in the report? My motion is that we should accept it. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I'll second, Ms. Carla. Thank you, Carla. Um, okay, so this is for the committee members. Uh, please say I if you agree with the adoption of the motion. Or aye. 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 Okay. Any nays? Motion adopted. We um, so it is official that we adopted the audit report that was presented to us. Thank you very much. It was a very big thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has been long time in waiting, right, Kathy? We, uh, and I think we started the discussion in March. So yep. good thing we did it. We finished it in 2021. We didn't have to wait for 2022. Good. <laughs> um, okay, moving on. Measure E financial audit report, follow up, follow up action. Um, so uh, this month, I did not re receive any reports from FUSD staff. Kelly, would you like to share some um, the reports? Actually, I did put the reports in the uh, uh, the folder, the share folder. Um, I Laura and I had discovered earlier that I did not have the correct permissions before to load them in but they are there now if people want to go ahead and look in the cboc folder under 12.1 the um, financial report as well as the monthly report is there um, so they are available for review and i will be happy to um you know go through that i can turn that over to um lisa to talk about the monthly status report Let's do that. Thank you so much. Lisa, are you, is your internet okay now? Yes, no, I'm here. Um, I was just, uh, we usually do the financial part, so I wasn't prepared. So let me go ahead and um, share my screen and bring up the report. And I will make this quick because there's not a lot of change in terms of uh scope that we've uh they've gotten complete here share come on share your entire present okay uh here we go okay can you see the report now oh it's wait it's working on it there it is there we go um wow it's all grayed in you can see it okay um so we'll start with uh as always design we have uh, Thornton, um, increment 3B and increment 4 still in design. Those are the last two increments for Thornton Middle School Conversion Project. Increment 3B is the classroom modernization. Increment 4 is the new library and administrative uh, offices uh, modernization of those. 
um, in that new building. Um, the increment 3B has been approved by DSA and is just on, uh, on hold, really, until increment 4 comes out of DSA. We're still waiting for increment 4 for DSA to complete their final review on that. We do anticipate that coming out this month. And then um, the CM team there at Thornton will jump right into putting packaging those two increments together, and getting them out to bid and uh, going through the procurement process. Centerville Middle School Conversion. Whoops, uh-oh, there we go. Center, Centerville Middle School Conversion. This is phase three increment two, which is the locker room, the new locker room renovation. And uh, in order to do that, we're bringing in two temporary uh, portables to set up a temporary locker room. Um, that is out to bid now currently. Um, and we anticipate uh, opening those bids December 21st and um, submitting that approved uh, contract uh, to the board on the January 12th board meeting. Uh, and then uh, they will move right into construction after that board approval. Uh, Kennedy High School modernization, that is uh, in design as well. Um, that has met 100% CD submittal. That is in DSA being reviewed by the agency. And concurrently, the CM team and the architect <clears throat> and the consultants uh, are all doing a constructability review um, of the bid documents or uh, of the um, um, approved 100% CD document. And then uh, while that's in DSA, they will do a constructability review on that. They'll complete that constructability review and hopefully the architects will turn it over to the architects to address those comments uh, prior to the documents getting out of DSA. So we anticipate doing a page turn review on that um, sometime either the end of this month or early next month. We anticipate it coming out of DSA sometime in February, uh, get out to bid um, March, April, and open the bids late April in time to start uh, do an NTP or a notice to proceed in May. Uh, and that is scheduling right on track. We'll go through this summer, um, through the academic school year, and then take it into, or, I'm sorry, this coming summer, which is 2022, take it into fall of 23. So we'll have two summers on that job. And that's really um, a lot of just miscellaneous modernization, some renovation of the theater, upgrading of the theater, but the majority of this work is um, 96 HVAC units, getting those all replaced on the roof. So, um, and then the group one elementary school projects, uh, those are in still, I'm, I'm holding those in project assessment phase. And I say that because um, we did run into some DSA delays um, in terms of DSA requirements for accessibility. So we are continuing the design review on those projects. Um, and hope to put together a scoping meeting, a scoping presentation for the board at the January, I'm sorry, that should say January 12th board meeting, not 10th. So, and then those will move into um, SD, uh, schematic design. And then, you know, that, that because of the scope on those projects is very minimal. It's really just a lot of modernization uh, type uh, floor, I'm not sorry, not modernization, but floor replacement and HVAC units as well, and then some roofing, roof patches on most projects, but on Matos, we are addressing the fact that that does need to have a full roof. Um, and we had a meeting with Kelly and the architects uh, last month, and it looks like we're going to try and pull, or our intent is to pull that roof scope out of the Matos modernization project and have that roof replaced as a full emergency. Um, and I think Kelly, you're working on how we're going to go about doing that and the funding for that, correct? Yeah, okay. Because that, that roof won't wait. So I know she's working with uh, Associate Superintendent's office and m and Actually, and I take that back. She just, I take that back. She just sent me an email that she's not moving that forward for approval on the board oh. and that she's gonna wait until January and have Kevin Arthur do a full roofing assessment um, for the district-wide projects. And I've already explained to her that this particular one, 
will not wait, but um, she said that she's going to do it based on what she believes is her thing to do. So I will keep you guys posted. Okay, that's good. Now, yeah, you and I haven't had a chance to talk this afternoon, but um, yeah, because we did do, we had Garland come in and do a complete assessment on that particular roof so that we could get an understanding or an idea of what it might cost to replace. They also had the previous roof assessments that were done. Um, it was five years ago, but uh, yeah, that roof, um, that roof is somewhat dangerous. So uh, I guess we'll wait and see what, uh, what her decision is on that. Okay. Lisa, when you say, sorry. Go ahead. Lisa, when you, when you say that the roof is dangerous, is it falling down? What is, no, how dangerous is that? There's a lot of dry rot throughout that entire site, which, you know, we've had discussions in our previous meetings, correct, on the right. dry rot that we're finding in multiple sites. It's just a, a condition of, I think, the area that we live in. Um, but that particular roof um, is uh, showing excessive dry rot. And there have been some instances where um, there are weaknesses on the canopies, the walkway canopies, those covered walkway canopies. They're showing some weaknesses in that roof where you're actually seeing holes coming through those canopies. So, Well, the other um, thing, Lisa, too, is yeah. we did have, well, while Garland was doing your assessment, we did have several instances where their foot actually went through the roof, the roof Correct. Um, membrane and penetrated. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, if you can imagine people walking and their feet going through the roof, that's the condition that this particular roof is in. Which is so. why we're expressing it as so such yeah. so dangerous. So, so we don't. Yeah. Will that not be an issue if we have rain? Oh, it's going to be a big issue. In fact, while we're sitting here, I'm actually writing her a letter, uh, letting her know the impacts of her decision and that we will anticipate Good. having a lot of water damage. There's going to probably be um, additional deterioration. And she just has to be prepared for the price increase as well, because effective January 1st, most rubber and petroleum products are going to go up about 20%. So for us not to take advantage of securing a contractor now and pricing in 2021 and push it to 2022, right. it's just penny wise and pound foolish. So, but she's the associate soup. She's made her decision and I will let her, um, sit on that so okay i'm sorry lisa i i interrupted you please go ahead no 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 that's okay um but uh so uh, sorry i have one more question so i did i miss what that decision is based on why um part of her decision is that we of course don't have funds for it so it does have to come out of the general fund and secondly um she doesn't feel that I've provided her sufficient information to make that decision. So she's going to go and have Kevin and her mm -hmm. teams of people who she believes to be the experts to do the evaluation again, to tell her the same information that I've already told her. Yeah. And, and we, the, and the design team have walked with Kevin multiple times already on all of these roofs as we went into design. So he's well aware as well, but. But the other roofs are not as bad. <laughs> so Matos is um, is definitely the, the focus of our concern for the roofing replacement. Okay. Um, yes, Brian. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you for allowing public comment. The, the Gosh, roof dream project is considered part of the bond scope for the Matos modernization. Um, it is, but the scope of work for the modernization work that's in the bond program, what we have to do far exceeds the budget that was established for it. So say we've got, maybe we have $300,000 set aside for roof repairs. Well, it's actually going to cost us about $1.4 million to do a full replacement based on the existing conditions that are there now. So yes, there is roofing in the scopes of work for the group one elementary schools, but because that scope of work was scoped out five, six years ago, right. those condition, those existing conditions at several of the sites have changed. So we're now in the process of reevaluating what our needs actually are gonna be for those and pricing it in 2021 terms. 
And so that's what's going to come back before you all, probably in January or February, depending on when we pin all these numbers down to say, here's what was proposed in 2016. Here's what the reality 2022 numbers are and where, where do we, where do we get the Delta to fill in from? Right. Well, I, I just want to make sure it was clear. Maybe others were already clear, but it is, it's a trade-off decision whether or not to adjust the bond budget for Matos or reduce other scope at Matos to support this, this, this additional roofing need. So it's kind of, well, and that's, that's so. the uh, part of the issue as well is these group one modernization, if you will, projects really are very limited. They're almost, um, I would call them almost a more, a, a um, a glorified, um, uh, maintenance project, right? I mean, we're going to replace some of the flooring. Uh, we're going to place their flooring in all the classrooms. We're going to replace some lighting. We're going to um, uh, replace the switch gear, the main electrical service. And the uh, and that is with the sole intent to serve the new HVAC units that the projects are getting. Other than that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, a little bit of roof patching where um, it was deemed necessary and certainly around where we would be doing the new HVAC units. Um, and then various sites, some might have a little paving, some might have fire alarm uh, system that needs to be augmented. Um, but they're not full on modernizations. They're very much very piecemeal. And so you really, there really is not a lot of scope that you could de-scope to save those funds and use them for roofing. You know, the, the main, yeah. uh, <clears throat> the main br brunt of the, the budgets are being taken up by the new switch gears, which we absolutely need in order to supply the new HVAC units, which we absolutely need, which the old switch gears could not support the amount of power we need for those new units. So that's really the bulk of those budgets. And then, you know, flooring replacement where there is asbestos flooring identified that will get replaced and then some other minimal works and various, you know, of various bits and pieces. And not a lot of scope to de-scope so. That's one of our other issues. Thank we, you. Thank you, Brian, for that question. Um, okay. Don't we have a measure 98 uh, money that was specially allocated for facility uh, improvements? I'm not sure which measure that is. Is it? I'm what, sorry. Is that measure I'm gonna, A I'm, or I'm, B? I'm, or? I'm messing up the name, uh, number. Is it 98, 92, 96, or 98? Which one is that? <laughs> the, the one which which comes from state for. So that's uh, the Prop 50. Those are Prop 51 dollars. There you prop go. Yeah. So those no monies have. Um, those monies have been received and they actually have been used to um, reimburse the bond for projects that were bond funded uh, that were part of the earlier, I guess, um, modernizations. And so those dollars are have, have been returned to us over time and have been put back in the bond in the contingency line. But recently, um, Associate Superintendent has required us to pull those dollars out of the and bond. actually list them as a separate line item. And we're waiting board direction that we can either continue to put them in the measure e as a reimbursement to the program contingency, or they can, you know, choose at their discretion to spend it on these various projects that are cropping up that fall outside of um, the bond and the non bond, you know, projects. And you'll see so that information. We, we, can, we can get to that because yes. uh, Clarissa has modified the report to show you guys what that looks like. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I have say, some we, questions about that, though. That'll be reflected in the, in the report when Clarissa does it. Um, we made those changes on the front so that you could see that information identified according to the way that the associate superintendent would like us to split it out now. So um, have fun at Scouts. <laughs> okay. Let me go ahead and finish this. Um, uh construction uh phases hopkins thornton and centerville the three large middle school conversion projects are moving right along um are really on schedule there are no real uh, major schedule impacts currently however we are highlighting and tracking very closely those material delays 
um, or uh, supply chain delays that could potentially impact our project. So we're tracking those and reporting very, um, we're tracking them very close to reporting weekly to Kelly and she is able to then forward that information and uh, report up, up the chain. But um, currently things are moving smoothly. Hopkins Middle School uh, conversion, the three new buildings, K1, K2, and J are in various forms of uh, concrete slab is complete and uh, the slab on grade is complete at K1 and K2. So now we are in steel erection. So you'll see that if you drive by, you'll see the steel going up on K1 and K2, which are the music room of the music building and the multipurpose building. Building J, which is the new classroom building, which is on the uh, left side. I can never tell, remember which direction that is. The left side of the school, um, they are still working on footings and uh, preparing the, uh, the ground for slab on grade rebar, formwork, all of that. Uh, the locker room and gym, uh, the interior modernization there is just about done. Buildings A and B, which are the admin and library that we just received, um, uh, turned over recently to the contractor. Those are going gangbusters, demolition and uh, abatements complete. All of the interior framing and um, um, MEP rough in mechanical electrical plumbing rough in is ongoing. And then building G, which is the science wing, and building H, which is the music wing, um, those actually got packed and moved out today. Those two buildings are um, two of the the buildings that we had the opportunity to start earlier than anticipated because the site has uh, decided, made that determination to stay over at Lila Bringhurst. So those two buildings are starting early and um, with the intent that we will have those complete now next summer in, in, instead of them dragging out a little longer than that. So that's uh, going really well. Now that they've moved out of G and H today, um, the contractor will get in there and start putting into containment and starting abatement and demolition. So, and they'll just uh, keep moving right along. Thornton, Thornton Middle School is in increment two, which are the five new buildings in the back of the, the site. Um, and they are in various uh, various um, phases of interior finish, ceiling insulation. Um, they are doing a little landscaping and uh, sprinkler piping out at the exterior areas, um, finishing up plaster. So increment two is well underway and, and nearing completion. Um, that should that will line up really well with three B and uh, increment four starting sometime in February. We're hoping so. That's lining up very well. Centerville Middle School conversion. Currently, um, phases one and two are complete. Phase three, the large majority of phase three is the new classroom building, which is building H. And that is uh, the steel erection on building H is now complete. So that went up very quickly, which typically does. Now they go through and do all of the tightening down of bolts, welding, et cetera, and then placing the metal decking, which would create the you know, the floors or the slabs for um, the, the various levels. Um, since that's really the only work they can do in terms of um, full-on construction during the day, the contractor is coming in and off hours, off academic hours, and doing some HVAC replacement work at buildings F, I, and J, just things that they can do to stay ahead of the game to try and keep the schedule moving forward and, and you know, in areas where, they might have experienced a little delay. They're pulling all that back. So building K is the um, the big problem child at Centerville. Although uh, we've you know found a, a good solution and that the issue is resolved, now the contractor needs to start moving forward once DSA approves the new details or the CCD that is submitted to, um, to correct the issues that building K had. Building K is the weight room. Um, it's a portable building that's well over 50 years old. Um, and so there was a lot of dry rot in the walls there. Um, rather than lose that building and um, they have nowhere else to move their weight room um, and the complete gut on the interior and modernization was already included as part of the contract. Um, it was determined that the value to replace the exterior walls um, as opposed to providing a new portable or trying to find some other space, but a new portable would be um, 
slightly, we've priced it in a number of different places, was would be slightly over a million dollars. So um, we received approval to go ahead and replace the four walls on that portable and then proceed with the scope work, which has already been paid for uh, to complete the uh, final finishes on the inside. And they'll have essentially, a, other than the floor, a pretty much a new weight room building. So that will be uh, a benefit for the, the site overall. Um, so they're working on building K and uh, building H and then some miscellaneous small things that they can do off, off hours. Uh, Horner Locker Room Expansion Portable Project is complete. That is the new, the two new portables are, are the two portables that were brought in as an expansion to their, their locker room. That project is complete. There are some punch list items that are in progress, some asphalt um, replacement that we need to, to uh, address in areas that weren't acceptable. And then we are still waiting lockers for um, these portables are one of those supply chain issues that I was referring to. Those were supposed to be here at the end of October. Um, they will not be here till January. So, um, but the, this uh, doesn't impact the site because they're actually not using those two portables yet and they're not dressing for PE, I don't believe. But um, they aren't, uh, these two buildings uh, uh, are not uh, fully needed right now. And if they do need to use them, they can do it without the locker room, with the lockers. So um, the principal's you know, fully content with that. So Washington High School Theater complete as well. They actually just had the last um, punch list item, which was the, um, the ticker tape. Um, what do you call it? The ticker tape. Um, what's the name? Ah, can't think of it. Um, the running marquee. Thank you. The marquee. Yeah. yeah. The ticker tape marquee um, was completed and they had a training on that today and um, everyone was excited to see it start running. So um, now it's just various uh, uh, closeout items to be received and that project will be complete um, and off the books. Um, we just have to turn some stuff in to get some stuff from the construction managers turn into DSA to close that out. So, um, Marshall, they have a they have a production coming up though. Yes, yeah, the yeah, first production and they... for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that stage floor was originally supposed to be painted black, and um, everyone discussed it. And the principal, you know, Bob looked at it and he's like, mm, I don't know if that'll work. And so we left it the light brown that it was originally came in on. And they had actually said the other day when we were out there that they were glad we didn't paint it black because with moving all of the um, pieces around and whatnot, uh, you would have seen it in the black paint. So it looks really good. They're they're very happy with it. They're excited. So and that's one of the reasons you do this, right? So you can see. Yep. Yeah. So Lisa, I have uh, two questions. So yes, we have been seeing a lot of supply chain issues, right? And then of course, project get delayed. Uh, in general, did the contractor come back to ask for escalation costs for the delay or compensable time delay? No. Oh, okay. No. Um, the We're using, and uh, we'll use the Washington example. We're using that, uh, or we're looking at the lockers coming in late as a punch list item. And so once they are received, um, the, uh, the subcontractor that was to install those has no problem coming back and just installing them for us. So um, there are no, no requests for extension on anything. That's good. That's good to hear. And yeah. also the other question is, I know we have been having a, quite a bit of a supply chain issues, which is you know, everywhere here. What about right. labor? I mean, especially in the Bay Area, which probably is very tough. Do we have what about labor? which? I'm, I'm sorry? La labor shortage. Do we have labor shortage? Uh, shortage? Um, I, I don't. I have not heard from any of the contractors that they're having any issues with labor right now. Um, it would it would depend on which um, which subcontractor you'd be talking to. But right now, we haven't had any uh, complaints from the contractor that they can't get anyone in. So so That's far, so know. good. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I will stop sharing. Thank you very much. Uh, Kenny, do we have financial report? 
Yes. Uh, we do have the financial report, and I'll turn it over to Clarissa to do that for you all. Oh, it's snowing where you are, Clarissa. Okay. Is it a virtual background, or is it really snowing? Yeah, it's a virtual background. Oh, good. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I would have San been Jose, very jealous. Like, I wish it would be snowing in San Jose. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a virtual yeah yeah so this is the cboc report um for the financial statements um uh we we did a little bit of uh, uh moving around funds uh just wanted to let everybody know this is still our revenue here at, at six um 684 million um it reduced by like 250 million because we had to move a washington theater project uh 250 000 budget into uh fund 25 instead of it being in fund 21 so that's why there's a difference here um as far as the report goes there's a, a few columns that uh we kind of uh tweeted a little, um, we added this Prop 39, which this is the Prop 39 funding here. Uh, we wanted to um, uh, elaborate that. And then um, the, the amount didn't change. Um, and then we also added a OPSC um, and also bond um, interest and E-rate column here. So these funds were um, moved into its own category, separating from a contingency. Um, <clears throat> and here is uh, the total um, here. Um, so we will go into what happened in the body of the report uh, here. So if you can, you guys can see my screen, right? We can. It's very small, but I am using my uh, drive. Oh, to you yeah, to it's, see it's that. Big for me. I, I don't know. Uh, trying to adjust it. Is this is this okay or on this? I'm okay, but I'm okay. Does is does anyone have any issues with the visibility? Not, or is it because I have it at one twenty five percent? So I don't know. Why I it's... think it's fine, Clarissa. Okay. Okay. So, um, so the, here we, we actually see the separation of the, 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 the budget. We actually had to take uh, monies from uh, contingency, um, the program contingency that if we go down here, you see a negative amount. So we had originally already put it, separated the OPCS, uh, OPSC fundings last month, uh, this 15 million. So we had to do an additional uh, separation of the bond interest and the E-rate, which you see here of the 14 million um, for the interest. And then of course the uh, E-rate of uh, the 1.5 million there. So those are the major changes to the, um, to the CBOC report. Um, What's the reasoning for taking these the bond were direct, These interest. were directed by the district, so maybe Kelly, want to elaborate on that? I'm sorry, I'm jockeying between two meetings right now. What was the question? Uh, what was the reason for uh, separating out the bond interest funds? Um, the district, so Associate Superintendent Pfeiffer stated that the board was under the impression that um, they had full control over the Prop $51. And so they don't remember authorizing the facilities department or the business department to take the OPSC dollars and put them back in the bond. Um, and unfortunately, because the, bo the board is relatively new, the only person, the only two people that were around when the bond started was Desiree Campbell and Larry Sweeney. And both of them have selectively forgotten that they had agreed to have the dollars reimburse the bond. So we've been scrambling trying to find documentation that this would actually, you know, one second. I'm sorry, what was the question? Because I'm in, I'm still at CBOC, but I'm also here now too. Okay, I'm Kelly Lynch McMahon, the Director of Facilities and Construction for Fremont Unified. So I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, so now the way that this is broken out 
is that all of our funding sources that actually come into the bond program are now identified individually versus being embedded within the program contingency. So now that you see where all of these dollars are, you can now see clearly our program contingency is supported by those Prop 51 OPSC dollars. And so when you take them out, you see that we have a negative $13,028,000. And when you take out the interest as well as the E-rate, it also shows where the deficit occurs. And so um, that was the purpose of us breaking it out this way because they had specifically asked to see it and wanted to know how much money we have received since the inception of the bond and how much interest has been earned because the way we were reporting it before you could see it on the cover sheet, but you couldn't really decipher and pull out exactly how much was coming from which source of funds. So that's why that's that way. So now that they have this information, we are now going to be asking their direction to make a decision or not make a decision to continue to allow those that $16 million to be reinserted back into the bond for us to be able to balance out and continue with the budgets that we have right now. Right. So, for example, um, the Group 2 elementary school project, which was is slated to start would have started sometime next spring. Um, you can see here with, uh, and that those that funding, it is funded, but it's not, um, if you look at the pro, uh, program contingency now, we have, we're in negative funds. So somewhere it's either group two or group three will end up ultimately not being funded if we don't replenish the contingency with what typically is replenished by the OPC, OPSC or the Prop 51 funds. Um, so, but they have to make that decision and, and give us that direction. Those are at the bottom. Um, so yeah. according to us, I know we, so we had this discussion earlier too, according to the CBOC uh, and previous discussions, if I'm not wrong, we what we understood was that um there was a there was a kind of an agreement that when the opec um opsc dollars come back they are going to come to measure e and they are going to they are going to replenish this fund so so that the um the facilities can continue to be updated the way it was planned by measure e bond uh, bond money right and the committee sent a memo that we never received a response to and i provided kelly with i believe a copy of that memo and when would when did we send it uh last year well uh, we sent it uh i think it was in june okay. no no it was in september it was in september because that's when we started this discussion with associate superintendent piper it was before she reported i thought Anyway, we had sent a, we did send a formal thing that they did not respond to. So, um, what do you think should be our next step for to advocate for this money coming back to um, measure E bond? Because I I personally think that this is wrong for um, for a promise to be broken for something that has already been said and talked about that it's going to it is measure e bond money and it will be replenished uh, for the school district to identify it as going to somewhere else or not being identified as a part of a cpoc money i think and this is just me me as a recommendation i think that you all should do another letter attaching the letter that you already sent them stating that you know this is our position and this is our understanding and ask them for consideration to continue, you know, to do what they had already previously agreed to do. And then that's what, you know, you all represent the constituents. That is what your expectation is. And I think they should need to, they would take that under consideration. And the date of the memo was not this year. It was last year because Brian, uh, I believe was he, well, actually Brian provided us with a copy of it, which I sent to you. Um, so uh, I 
I don't know when it was, but I, I know I sent it to you, um, Kelly. I'm trying to find stuff in my files. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard. Kathy, would you like to spearhead this, uh, another memo? I can find the bloody original one. The one th <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. Um, it here. Okay, uh, I we sent it to them in 2018, <laughs> actually. Oh. So it's been an, a long that our understanding was it was going to be that, that the reimbursement was going to happen. Um, so let me look at that. And um, Brian had authored that, and um, I'll get back to you. Okay, I'll Thank see you, what Debbie. I can do, but uh. It's probably not going to be this this week or next week because I've got a lot of that's stuff. That's okay. But that's okay. They are not meeting uh, until January anyways. So. Yeah, and they, they don't have a, re a reputation for hasty decisions, clearly. <laughs> yeah. So at least... Uh, okay. I mean, because this this money has really become important for Matos. Yes, it um, has. Yeah. So if it was anything else, we would have said, okay, let's wait for a couple of months. Yeah. It is. It we are in a dire situation to have this money right now. Yeah, I will get. I will get on this. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Vanita, I think we can also uh, do like a committee. I think that's allowed for the for CBOC. If um, you know, um, if you wanted to create like a, a a committee that would try to draft something to then present at our next CBOC meeting as, as what the memo would say. And then we would have to basically vote to send that memo. I agree with that suggestion. What That's I will do idea. is I will send out to all CBOC members the message that we sent in 2018, okay? Right. And I, I, can, I can do that this week and that will kind of start a discussion. How's that? We can do that, but I think officially we'll have to announce the committee in this meeting in a, in public, so that uh, when we when we bring it back to in January, we have we have it as a committee report. Right? That's Carter? fine. I can. I mean, if Kathy's on board, I I can be in a committee with Kathy and anyone else who wants to join. And we've had ex officio committees before when we're trying to work on something before it's mm -hmm. it's formalized. Okay, so I think let's do that. That will be a very good idea. Uh, I know Chip is not here. Maybe I can volunteer him for that too. So um, <laughs> if, if he's allowed back in the country, you know, he's fishing in Mexico and getting back mm -hmm. in the U.S. may be a bit difficult. Oh, that's a different thing. I hope, oh, and he said he does not have internet. Um, yeah. So, okay, let's have um, anybody else who wants to be on the committee? Other than Carla, Kathy? Maybe we could also ask Siv offline. Okay. So maybe if the committee is me, Kathy, and then tentatively Chip and or Siv. Okay. Um, and I I will be there, but I, I don't know how much contribution I can do. Um, I, I will be part of committee, though. So it's basically all of our committee, everybody mm -hmm. who is in the committee, except for, uh, I think, Paul and uh, Susan. Mm -hmm. No, I can't even get this thing on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's OK. Thank you so much. OK. So we have a committee now to write the, um, to author the memo to FUSD, and we will be ceasing it to superintendent and associates, uh, assistant superintendent, right? And I think we, I think we have to actually, at our January meeting, the committee would present the memo to the CBOC, and then we would vote on sending it, I guess. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm writing. I'm taking notes. But I will get that Brian's original memo from 
2018 out to everybody um okay tomorrow or friday and you know say what are our thoughts how do we structure that sort of thing so we'll get it moving somehow okay thank you kathy thank you carla so moving on i'm sorry um who will be Clarissa, you yeah. were, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. It's okay. I mean, those are the major changes. Um, a little bit of changes were happened uh, in, in progress. We had to move the uh, American High School modernization and the VoIP job back into in progress because technically they're not closed because there's still some activity is on them. So I had to move that back up. So you will notice that the expenditure increased um, from 182 million to uh, 212 million. And it's because the expenditure had to go with those jobs. So in actuality, the increase of expenditures for them uh, for October through uh, mid November was actually like 1.9 million. It was not 30 million. It's because I had to move it back into the um, in progress section. So just those are the only things I, I needed to, you know, let you guys know, in okay. case you're wondering what we spent uh, the last uh, month before. And I, that's all for me. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions. I mean, does anybody have anyone have any questions for Clarissa? Beyond what we have discussed? No. Thank you very much, Clarissa. Thank you for your report. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for the transparency. And good luck in your next job. Oh, thank you. Where are you moving to, Clarissa? Oh, it, it's just to another uh, position within the Bay Area. It's a little closer. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item. Where am I? Hey, I got a question. Uh, okay. Every other state in the union, people aren't even wearing masks. Why don't we got to stop these virtual meetings and depend upon computers to get us to communicate? Oh, that's a hard question, I believe. Um, Kelly is not here, but then I, I think it, it's it's a hard question looking at For all over the an new... hour, thing up, and I got the code number, everything. I've joined the club. I belong to Zoom. I got all the stuff, and it just says I got the wrong code every time. But I managed to find it on the phone, so I guess okay. The telephones, I still don't. I actually got a phone that has a wire that comes out the back of it, plugs into the wall. So it works. Thank you, Paul, for logging in. Uh, this is, I can totally understand your frustration. Oh, yeah, it drives me crazy. Catch you guys next meeting. Keep me up to date, please. Thank you, Paul. We do have um, eight more minutes to go, uh, and we have a lot of things on the agenda. However, let's move, let's move on. Uh, go ahead. We, thank you. We do have, um, I think... Are there any more reports from uh, you guys, Lisa? Clarissa, no, we're, that's it for us. No, that's it. Okay. That's all for me. Okay, good. So do we have any questions or answers uh, for the board members um, or information about, um, of course, we did talk about CPOC members. And um, okay, what else? Oh, uh, next board, next CBOC meeting is going to be on 5th of January. However, uh, because of the law, we'll have to meet one more time in the middle. So January 5th, that means we can meet anytime after December 5th. It will be a very short meeting, a five-minute, two-minute meeting. All we need to do is just vote to continue having meetings online. I know, Paul, you don't like it at all. But unfortunately, this is what we have to do because um, that is the instruction we got from superintendent. Yeah, my so picture the, just, now what I do, okay. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so, Vanita, this is Carla. Um, the fifth is considered a, the, I thought the district was the district. I know my the kids are out of, they're still on break during the fifth. Is this you know, you are open? right. 
You are right. I I'm not sure. What about you, Kelly? <clears throat> oh, there's Paul. Look at you, Paul. Mm, we get to see you. <laughs> you unmute, Paul. Guys, I'm going to have to sign off because I need to get over to the FAC meeting. Hey, Are you Kelly, Kelly, on a journey? Kelly, Kelly quick question. Yes. Um, so Carla brought it up and I totally uh, did not see it. January 5th is are going to be sub, is supposed to be our meeting. However, January 5th school should, schools are closed. So um how can are we meeting on January 5th for CBOC? Um technically the district is still closed on January 5th. Um and the next available time would be January 19th because January 12th is a board meeting. So I don't know unless you guys want to change it to a different day in January. Um, what do you guys think? 19th. January 19th? Okay. Can, then I'll need a motion to for that. I'm assuming the previous year's Um, Can I just ask real quick, Kelly, do you think the board meeting on the 12th, there's going to be a decision made about that, that, that money, that O. PSC money? Uh, the oh, Prop 51? Yeah. Um, I believe they're going to try and make a decision about it on this meeting, December 8th, because I'm presenting it to them uh, as the quarterly report. And if you all want to have impact in their decision, my suggestion would be that you guys speak up at the December 8th meeting and let them know what your thoughts and your opinions are. So we wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to have a pres we wouldn't be able to submit anything as the CBOC before then because I think I think um, everything is closed. By I then, don't right? see any reason why if you guys can't pull something together by Friday or even Monday to send it to them because they will they will try and address it because it will come to them before the meeting. And it's a perfect opportunity for you guys to go to the finance and budget meeting on Monday and actually pose that question to them because it is open to the public. Will it be possible for you to send us the link, Kerry? Sure. Link and I will be happy to do that. I think I'll probably get it tomorrow because Malecki never sends it to me until the last minute. So I'll make sure that I send that out to you guys. Okay. Uh, okay. So considering what Kelly told us, what do you think we should have? Uh, when do you think we should have our January meeting? I know we'll have to do a little bit. Um, our committee thing will have to be very quick and we cannot oh. wait for the next next meeting. Okay, I, I can tell you, I cannot do anything uh, in regards to what we were discussing by Monday. It is impossible with my current schedule. So I, I'm sorry, but I Understood. can't. No worries. I'd be happy if you guys want me to help you draft something and you guys wordsmith it. I'll be happy to help you guys do that. I think it's that important. So, um, but you let me know. I think that's a good idea. Maybe... Um, Maybe Kelly can do it. Kelly can write, draft it, and we all can view it and agree or not agree with it. What do you think? I just don't know if we can do that without a meeting or some sort of motion, Benita. Yeah. Oh, I see what you guys are saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think we have done, we have sent out memos without motions in the past. Not for no. CBOC. No. Uh, I'll have to check with Chip. I don't remember. I mean, in the previous emails, I, I somehow remember that there was a couple of emails that were sent to the um, to the superintendent without having a meeting. Uh, those to were, that those were follow ups on asking where the report was. Okay. Those were those that was what was done, and I don't think that required a formal meeting. What we're talking about now is a meeting of a memo of concern from the CBOC. And um, I'm sorry, I just uh, I am swamped th through next Monday, and actually, I don't even think I can do that Monday night meeting because I have another CBOC meeting for Measure I at the same time. So Okay, so I okay, then let's maybe maybe do this. Whoever can make it to the December 8th meeting, we can we'll we can go and speak up at the board meeting. 
but as ourself, not representing CBOC. Just, just I will, I will, sh I will share with everybody the meeting, the mess, the memo that was sent out by Chip, by Chip, by Brian in twenty in two twenty eighteen, and I will do that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you no, all at least, it, and then you can decide what if you want to sh address something. Okay. Right. So. Question for Kelly, um, is it more impactful for someone to attend that finance meeting on the 6th or the board meeting, is the board meeting on the 8th? She's addressing the staff right She's now. at the FSC right uh, now. Okay. So okay. Vanita, can I ask, are you at, at all available to attend the, the meeting on the 8th, the board meeting? Uh, I have a conflict of time but i am hoping my my uh, earlier meeting will end before the uh, the board meeting starts so in that case i can attend it so maybe could we maybe i i would be okay with motion making a motion that vanita as the you know our you're our current um uh, chairman chairman to um you know i could I'm going to make a motion that Vanita is our current chairman, chairman of the CBOC to that you would be able to relay our concerns about the um, Prop $51 that the CBOC has already discussed. Um, I think quite a few times we've discussed the issue with the, the Prop $51. Um. I'll need a second for that and um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposites, please say no. Motion passes. I'll be honored to speak up for CBOC and share our concerns uh, with the board on, on December 8th. Is that board meeting going to be in person or is it going to be um, virtual? The board meetings are unfortunately all, all in person, but you can uh, you can watch them live on the um, on your laptops and TVs and attend them on phone. Comment on phone. Okay, what I was going to say, Vanita, is if 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 I can if I can make it on Wednesday, I will go and be moral support to you. How's that? Thank you so much. But, uh, but <laughs> I have to see what's going on. Okay, and while Absolutely. we're about ready to adjourn. Can you put Lisa and the other folks uh, from her group, they're, they're on as emails when you send, make, give them access to the uh, folder so they know when meetings are? Because sometimes in the chain, they don't get notified of the meetings. Am I correct, Lisa? Correct. Yeah, we, we've been trying. Um, and at this point, it's not uh, any reason to worry about Clarissa. But um, I'm not getting the invites, and I did just get set up with the folder with Kelly this afternoon. She helped out with that, but um, I'm just not getting the invites. So Lisa, I... maybe, Lisa, just send me the email on the CBOC um, email ID that uh, appears you created for me. I'll make sure that you are in the mailing list if you are not in the mailing list yet. I'm sorry. So send the email from what? So, oh, I'm forgetting my email address. It's such a, such a brand new email address. Um, oh, yeah. No, CBOC, I I CBOC meet at fusd.12.net. Vanita, also, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that the January meeting for CBOC be held on Wednesday the 19th. Thank you Second so the motion. Much. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, all and those is that in favor. 30? Sorry, I just want to make sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's at 6.30. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed say nay. Motion passes. Our next uh, CBOC meeting is going to be on January 19th at 6.30 p.m. Okay. And then, Vanita, do you have to be added to the to make a comment on that on the board meeting, or how does that work? So uh, if you want to make a comment uh, from phone, you have to call them and let, let them know that you want to comment on this agenda item. But if you're there in person, how do you make it, a comment? If I'm there, if we are in there uh, in person, we fill up a card and give it to um, Patty. 
Okay, so you yeah. so you wouldn't have to do anything like ahead of time to like sign. No, up, right? no, 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 no. It okay. will be just instinctively that I can go there and do it. Okay, excellent. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Any, I think we are about done with the meeting. It's eight oh four. Oh, uh, do we have any burning topics that we want to see in January on January nineteenth meeting? Not yet. I would just advise sending something out like the beginning of January saying any topics anybody wants to add. I think we'll yeah. out at this point. Yeah, I'll do that. I do that anyways, but I just wanted to make a yeah. note if I'm yeah. if I think we could something. we could bring up again the yes. desire of the CBOC to to go on a tour. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We had, we're still trying to see, I think, Horner, right? We are trying to see a lot of facilities yeah, there. Yeah. So. <laughs> So maybe once they start allowing that, yeah, exactly. So okay, I think that's so. We can I'm discuss sorry, that. I guess <laughs> <laughs> that could be the topic. Like, when can we see these facilities? Because I think that oh, that's, that is actually, I think that's part of the C CBOC's, per, you know, our job is yeah. to actually kind of see the the product <laughs> that we're supposed to be like. So I don't we know. did have that discussion in the last meeting, and we also had the same discussion with the superintendent when Chip and I met him, and then we again had that same discussion At the in our meeting, yeah. in our joint meeting. Mm -hmm. So I had been hearing a lot of prom promises that we will get to see them soon. I'm I'm hoping it will happen soon. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. It's eight oh six, and if there is nothing else to discuss, I'll adjourn the meeting at eight oh six. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, Paul, no. Paul, you have something to say? No, I just raised my hand to agree because I can't tell if my mic's on or off. <laughs> it's on. And your face. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Have a nice Happy, holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. See you guys. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay.